Welcome to Keto Life Support, where we make your keto life sustainable, fun, and low stress. I'm Kim Howerton, and I'll be coming to you weekly with some of my keto besties to bring you the practical, real-world keto advice that you need. Quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, and even if we do have a doctor in the house from time to time, he or she is not your doctor, and nothing we say on this show should be taken as medical advice. Always check in with a trusted medical professional about your own personal medical concerns. Hello, and welcome to Keto Life Support. This is Kim Howerton, and I am joining you here for episode 121, and we're going to talk about, do I have to track Tracking. Let's talk about tracking in general. One of the questions we'll answer is, do I have to track? So what is tracking? Well, loosely, tracking just means keeping track of your food. But specifically, when I say tracking, I usually mean that you're either writing it down or putting it into an app and knowing not just what you ate, right? Like a food diary to me is, you know, I ate six ounces of chicken, but a tracking, the way that I would define it is, I know what six ounces of chicken is in macro form and I keep track of that as well. So for most people, I would say use an app There are ones that are available on desktop or on your phone Um, just for convenience sake. I've done both methods and uh, an app is very helpful as opposed to having to Google your macros for everything and then write it in your little book. But if you love that, keep doing it. Do what works for you. So that's how I would define tracking. Tracking is putting the foods you're eating or going to eat into some type of either paper or electronic tracker, which also tracks the macros that you're eating. That is how I'm defining tracking for today's purposes. Now, does everyone need to track? No. First, let me say, if you're currently not tracking, but you are losing weight, feeling great, healthy, meeting your goals, love and life. I see no problems. There is nothing to fix there in terms of your food, at least. So to add tracking, I don't believe that would add any benefit. So does everyone need to track now? Does it pay maybe to like track a couple days just for curiosity's sake? And you might say, wow, I eat less protein than I thought I did. Or wow, I eat more carbs than I thought I did, right? Sometimes it can be a good little check-in, take it on as an exercise. But if everything's going well for you, do I think it's imperative that you start tracking or even important at all? Not really. When do I think tracking becomes important? Well, tracking becomes important when it's not working the way you want it to. If you have weight loss goals that you're not meeting, if you have health expectations that are not being realized, uh, you don't have any data to analyze, and you suspect this has to do with your food intake, you need to know more details than you know. And so to know the details, you need to start tracking. Do I think you need to track forever? No, this is a learning process. I will let you in on something. I hated elementary school. Really, I hated it. I didn't want to go every morning, did not enjoy it. I really liked college, though, right? But if I didn't go to elementary school, I wouldn't have gone to college, right? So it's like you sometimes you got to pass through certain hoops to get to other places. So thinking of tracking, if you're if you're just opposed to it, you don't love it. It's just not your thing feels very offensive to you, right? Just think this is, I'm just learning right now. I'm just taking a class on food right now. I'm just taking a home study. And at the end of it, when I've learned what I need to learn, I can stop, okay? So it's just, it's a temporary thing. If you hate it, think of it as a temporary thing. That may help. Because sometimes people, they get really bogged down, not like in tracking today, but they keep having this recurring thought. I don't want to do this forever, right? You don't have to do it forever. You're learning what's going on to make changes in the way that you're eating so that you can then eat that way. And we're creatures of habit. Once we learn the pattern of eating that works for us, we can keep doing that and not have to be all up in the details. But I will bring up one point that I think makes people think they hate tracking when they don't have to, is they get very type A about it. It's like, if I say, hey, these are your target macros, 
I'm just giving you numbers here. Don't know. These are, I'm not, I don't know who you are listening to this. I'm not giving you your target macros, but let's say I said, Hey, your target macros are hundred grams of protein, hundred grams of fat and 25 grams of carbs. But you know, today you were at like 110 grams of protein, uh, 90 grams of fat and 30 grams of carbs. And people are like, I have failed. No, you're in the ballpark. It's fine. Just look at your weekly average because sometimes you're a little over on one, you're a little under on one, and you're probably right there. If you're within like 10 or so percent of where your targets were, were designed to be, then I call that a success. Please stop obsessing about a gram of something. You can't accurately actually measure that. You can actually measure a gram of, of food, but one head of broccoli versus another head of broccoli, one of them has a little more sugar, one of them has a little more fiber. One cow versus another cow, one's a little bit more marbled, one's a little less. So we're already only estimating when we're entering macros into our tracker. So being obsessively precise about an imprecise thing is not really super helpful get as precise as you can just as a mental exercise, but do not obsess about it. And good enough is good enough. Just going to say that. Now, if you're like, Hey, I'm doing everything. It feels right. And I'm, um, and I'm still not seeing the progress. Then you can say like, okay, am I a little too loosey goosey here? Maybe, but in the neighborhood is really what we're looking for. We're not looking for, you know, did I find the right closet in the right room in the right house? We're like, am I on the right street? Good. Fine, move on. So that maybe might help some of you who think you hate tracking make it a little bit better. Because if you think you have to get it exactly right, and then it's it's just, it's an obsessive world then, and I don't want you to go there. But I've learned something recently, because initially I would teach my clients, I would say, hey, it's not that hard to track. Now, I'm somebody who likes to track because spreadsheets give me joy. But I understand you're not all weird like me. But I would be like, it's not a big deal. We kind of all eat the same thing fairly repetitively. So you find two or three breakfasts that work for you, two or three lunches that work for you, some basic dinner guidelines, right? And so it's like 90% of your dinners are probably something along the lines of a salad or a vegetable and a piece of meat and you cook with some type of fat. It's like, well, that's there. You're just making minor changes there. It's pretty basic, right? Or lunch, you know, it's often... Uh, like a, a wrap and some meat, you know, it's like, oh, okay, and breakfast, like, oh, maybe it's eggs, you know, it's like, it's just kind of like, oh, it's one of these two or three things and we keep going and we keep going because lives are like that and food is often like that. And what I find is that repetitive nature of how we tend to eat really supports proper long-term health. And I can tell you that um, that is not how I always approach food. I am not one of those people who says, you know, just eat to live, don't live to eat, right? There are people who use that phrase. And what that basically means is don't make your life about enjoying food. Just eat the food you need so that you can survive your life. And I'm like, I'm not that person. I love food. It feels very constricting to me. But there is a truism in it. There is a thing that is helpful in it because it's in the middle, right? It's not all or one. But once upon a time, my life revolved around every waking moment when I wasn't otherwise occupied, or sometimes when I was, thinking about my next meal and and fantasizing about it, right? My whole life's purpose felt sometimes like, uh, you know, sort of rubbing my hands together in glee and thinking about what type of thing I could eat today, right? And so my focus of living was, was eating. And... That, I will say, for the most part, has a tendency to be the way that people who have disordered eating tend to eat. Now, I'm not saying that we can't be excited about food, we can't think about food, even on a special occasion, or let's say you have reservations at a really fancy restaurant, you aren't looking at the menu ahead of time and getting excited about what you're going to order. You know, those those are within the realm of normal. But um. Let me just tell you that fantasizing about going through the drive-thru at McDonald's every day is a little weird when I went through the McDonald's drive-thru every day. I was like, it was this weird, repetitive excitement about food that, you know, objectively was not all that good. Now, it was certainly designed to be addictive, and so that was the process that was having. But, like, you know, objectively, it was, there's not a lot of excitement there. It was an excitement about getting my fix 
of my addiction of this food, right? And so recently I was talking with a client, we'll call her Susan. Her name is not Susan, we'll call her Susan. Apologies to all Susans. And I was very, I was like, I was having trouble understanding why she was so adverse to tracking. She was like, I hate tracking, it's so not me. I was like, well, I get that it's just not natural, but you know, it really takes like two or three minutes. I like, did a lesson. I showed her how I do it. I'm like, I just like, hey, this is what I'm going to eat. I know I have chicken and beef and fish, you know, whatever I've got in my fridge. And I'm going to think, okay, well, when am I going to eat those this week? Because I already had to have grocery shop. So they're in the fridge and I'm looking at the week and I'm laying it out. And how am I going to, you know, just sort of did it. And I thought, okay, I showed that this was a five minute process for me to plan my whole week. And then I could make adjustments as it went, but I knew what I was going to be eating because I knew it was in my fridge and I knew what I'd shop for and seemed pretty basic and straightforward. And she said, oh, no, I don't do that. I enter things in my tracker after I've eaten them. And I was like, whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. Because in my programs, I say always track in advance. What does that mean? So at night before, well, at night before the next day, at night always comes before the next day. That was an odd thing to say. At night, I put in what my next day's food is going to be because I pretty much know what I've got in my fridge, what I'm likely to eat, and I eat the same thing over and over again, so it's pretty easy. Now, if there's a special occasion that week or I'm going out to eat that week, obviously that would be a little different. I'm going to put in there what I imagine that I'll be eating, and that might be different. I don't eat out every day, so it's not it's not quite the same. But you know, for my regular plan, I've got my plan in for most of the week. And I literally am just hitting on the days like copy day, copy day, <laughs> copy day, because I'm eating pretty much the same thing. Uh, you know, like this week I had a big salad every night for dinner. It's summertime. I love the pr- fresh produce this time of year and I love salad. And I had a turkey, bur- well, no, a chicken burger. Sorry, I keep saying turkey burger. It's a chicken burger. It's better. Turkey burgers I made with that. And then the second half of the week I had steak because I had chicken burgers and then I made some steak. And that was super easy. So I just switched out what the protein was with the salad. But, you know, this is what I say. Plan your week and then your week tends to work. And this is where not tracking later comes in. Because really, I eat the same thing over and over again. It's pretty basic. Then she was like, no, no, no. I have to put it in after I eat it. Because until I go into the kitchen, I just, I don't know what I what I want to eat. I don't, you know, until until that meal, I want to be able to, to have spontaneity there. And I thought, oh, no. And what it really came down to and what I had to say is you don't dislike tracking. You dislike any kind of food control. And that's really the basics of it is tracking is just a minor detail. And you can be successful with or without tracking. Again, tracking can be useful to help guide your food choices. But if you approach eating as something of a free-for-all, If you think about, you know, not wanting to be tied down with your food choices, you want to be able to live in the moment with spontaneity. Well, you know, if you set your life up perfectly, I could see you might be able to do that, right? Let's say you, I'm going to give just a moment to this thought. If you are somebody who likes spontaneity to a certain degree, and you're like, okay, I'm going to cook a batch of broccoli, a batch of asparagus, and a batch of, I don't know, cauliflower. I'm going to have each one of those in a Tupperware. And I'm going to cook a batch of steak and a batch of sausage and a batch of chicken. I'm going to have each one of those in a Tupperware in the fridge. And I want to be able to go to the fridge and say, do I feel like steak, sausage, or chicken right now? Do I feel like broccoli, cauliflower, or asparagus right now? Like that kind of spontaneity, I totally support because that's just, you're just flipping around the exact food, but the macros are going to be about the same. The food quality is going to be about the same, right? That kind of spontaneity you can do. That kind of spontaneity takes a lot of preparation though. So I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not super spontaneous. So that's not a problem in my mind if you want to do that kind of thing. But that's usually not what people mean. Usually people are like, you know, still in that food fantasizing place. Oh, I want to make a this. Oh, I want to make this recipe. Oh, I want to make that recipe. And it's very like last minute, not wanting to be pinned down. And like I said, there are ways you can make that kind of spontaneous desire work with a lot of preparation, a lot of food prep. It's all laid out in there so that you can, you can change it up. 
Uh, you could also do something like if this is, you know, if you're like, I refuse to not be this person, you know, use a meal prep company where there are a bunch of different dinners and lunches and breakfasts that are, you know, given to you, but they all fit within sort of the same macro basics. You know, that could be a way that it could work. But ultimately, I would say that what really needs work long term here is the mindset. Because I don't think you can just take disordered food mindset and then put it on the template of low carb or keto eating and then long term have that be successful. I think this is an opportunity here to start tracking and planning because it's really more about the planning than it is about the tracking. The tracking is just a detail. But really planning the types of foods that are good for your body and work for you, that is the key to long-term success. The way we were taught to eat as we were growing up, not everybody, but the way I was taught to eat and the way that many of my clients were taught to eat, maybe not by our parents, maybe just by culture, society, advertisements, the way we grew up learning to eat, maybe I'll say it that way instead of it being like an intentional teaching, is not healthy. It's not useful. It's not good for us. We need a degree of planning because if we don't plan, we don't have what we need, right? If you're going on vacation, you got to pack all the stuff you need in your, in your suitcase or else you're going to be on vacation. You're not going to have it. You need to have the right food in your refrigerator because if you don't, when you get to mealtime, you're not going to have the food you need and you're going to make poorer choices. So planning is super important. And getting okay with meals being a time when you enjoy your food and you get properly nourished by your food, but it's not like a party every meal. I think there's benefit in starting to realize that, that it's not constant variety. It's not constant desire fulfillment. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't eat anything I don't like. And I like everything I eat, but I don't eat everything I like, if that makes sense, right? I have a plan for my week. Do I want to spontaneously decide every meal to eat something different? If I had the time for it, yes, sure. I'm going to make this recipe. I'm going to make that recipe. I'm going to make this other recipe. I love making recipes, but I know that if I'm constantly making recipes, new ones and different ones... Um, recipes can be good. I'm not dogging recipes. I'm just saying I, I, if I make a pot of keto gumbo, I'm eating it for several days. Um, I'm not like constantly changing it up because I just find that that approach is not super successful for most people. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, I do that and it works great. And if you've lost the way you wanted to lose and have been able to continue to maintain your weight loss on that, fabulous. You do you. You keep doing that. I support you. But I am pointing out a place where I see a lot of people either not lose all the weight they want to lose or regain the weight is because they um, sort of drift into the, what do I want right now? Uh, You know, kind of place where things are not planned, tracked, you know, and, and to some degree there's restriction involved. I mean, if you're at maintenance and you're just maintaining your weight, not a lot of restriction. But I will say it, you know, and for most people, a lot of people, some people, I don't know, some number of people uh, along the spectrum of a few to everybody, they don't feel overly restricted when they're like, I feel great. I'm not hungry. I'm getting enough food. Things are great, right? But we can easily, if we let that voice who says, oh, what do I feel like right now? Oh, that looks good. Oh, I saw that recipe, right? I look at food magazines and I get excited and I start making, I'm going to make this and I'm going to make that. And I'm like, "Hmm, one this week. I'm going to make one of these things this week. I'm not going to make 10 of these things this week because that tends to be disastrous. So I am here to say a couple of things. Let me summarize. One, do you have to track? Not if things are going well. Do you have to track if things are going poorly? Probably. Uh, that would be my work. There are multiple ways to fix things. This is the way I found works the best for most people. I'll say it that way. Do I need to keep doing it forever? Not unless it serves you. 
But stop and consider if it's the tracking you hate or it's the planning you hate, if it's the thought of any restriction you hate, if it's the thought that you have to change your mindset out of your disordered food thought mindset and into more of a regimented, workable, healthier mindset. Because there's really good work to be done in that space. The mindset of um, restriction, reward, pleasure, spontaneity. Get really curious about what's going on there when you feel like your inner two-year-old is having a, I don't want a tantrum about tracking. Say, is it the tracking? Is it really the tracking? Or is it something deeper? Because here in this realm right now is where we find true healing in this topic. So if you find you're like, no, I refuse to let go of my desire to have exactly what I want the moment I want it, I would say perhaps there are some other skills you need to work on. Perhaps some other self-soothing skills, perhaps some other self-care skills, because some of us only ever learned food as a soothing strategy. Tough day, eat. Emotional time, eat. Thought pattern you don't like, eat. It distracts you from that, right? That food fantasy all day is very good at distracting you from any negative thoughts. So instead, you might have to start to develop other skills like going for a walk, talking to a friend, getting a massage, doing some meditation, all sorts of things that don't involve food in those moments when feelings come up and you want to eat, but instead you'd have to do something that's not going to be detrimental to you. So this is an opportunity for growth. So question, do I not like tracking? If you think you don't like tracking, ask yourself, is it actually the tracking or is it something deeper? If it really is the tracking, just say like, I'm just taking this on as a learning experience and that'll probably make it easier. We can do hard things. We just can't do them forever. So you're like, ah, this is a growth experience. I'm just doing this for a little while. I don't have to fundamentally change who I am to do it. But if it is something deeper, take the opportunity to learn here because this can change your life. My experience of going from somebody who fantasizes about food all day to somebody who loves their food and plans their food, but I don't really need to obsess about it because I know what I'm going to be eating for the week. So what's the point in just spinning my circles around that? I got now I got all this brain space. What do I do with that? That brain space can feel a little anxious, but it's okay. This is where real growth can be. Finding other ways to deal with having spare time for thinking you can start doing some things that are better for you instead of just engaging in your repetitive, self-destructive thoughts. So I encourage you to take this on. I hope this has been helpful for some of you, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of Keto Life Support. Want more information? Want show notes? Want to suggest a topic? Just head over to ketolifesupport.com. That's where all that kind of thing can go on. By the way, I have a request. If you could go to your podcast host and hit subscribe, we would really, really appreciate it. And what would be even more awesome is if you could write a review. And what would be even more awesome than that is if you could write like a really flattering review. Just asking, you know, you do you. All right. So thanks so much for joining us. I'm thrilled that you're part of the Keto fam. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.